Hi everyone, Gail Dawn here. Welcome into my sewing space. This is another in our series of technique, short technique videos. This one is not so much a technique as it is a dis just a discussion on the types of fabrics I like to use. And there are a million beautiful fabrics out there and this is by no means a comprehensive list for an abbreviated time here, I just pulled a few of my favorites. If I'm doing an heirloom project, like a christening gown or a baptismal dress, first communion, something very delicate that would lend itself to French hand sewing by machine techniques, uh, and in no particular order here, um, I like a fabric called Nalona. It is generally 45 inches wide. It's pretty sheer. You have to have a slip or something underneath it. But it's a beautiful sheen cotton that takes very well to heirloom sewing techniques. Um, this is a brand name on this one, but it's called Barissima One. It's very similar to the Nalona, but I feel it's a little bit more sheer. And it is 54 or possibly 56 inches wide, but very similar to the Nalona. Be aware that the Barissima comes as a Barissima Two, which is a heavier version of Barissima One, but also quite sheer, more appropriate probably for blouses. Um, I, as an adult, I would still find this pretty sheer without something underneath it. Um, what has become though my favorite fabric for heirloom techniques, if I'm gonna make a christening gown, I like to use Swiss voile. I prefer it to the, the Nalona and the Barissima because of the wrinkle factor. The voil has more of a spring to it and it takes the heirloom techniques beautifully, but it is not as wrinkly as the Nalona and the Barissima. Um, there is a fabric called Imperial Batiste, which is a 65 poly 30, 35 cotton blend. It's not as sheer as the Swiss fabrics, but it is quite a lovely fabric if you're on a budget and are not wanting to worry so much about the wrinkle factor on a project. The Imperial Batiste is a nice choice. A little bit more wintry, but also a beautiful choice for an heirloom garment is something called Swiss flannel. It's got a brush surface to it. It's not as sheer as the Nalona, but a beautiful fabric to work with. One that's possibly a little offbeat and that you have to really be careful what techniques you use on it is Silk Batiste. It has a beautiful drape and sheen to it, but you can get yourself into trouble trying to do lace shaping or things on Silk Batiste. It doesn't behave like the cotton does. So limited use on the Silk Batiste. A total favorite for me is a traditional old style dotted Swiss. There are different kinds of dotted Swiss. This one's actually called, called Cumetus and it is the one that has the little tufts of thread in it rather than a machine embroidered dot. You can actually pull these out if you want to remove them in the area where you're gonna smock. And this, this has such a nice vintage feel to it and pretty good on wrinkle factor. Dotted Swiss isn't as wrinkly as many of the other heirloom fabrics. For things like sashes or collars, if you're looking for something really sheer, Silk Organza is a beautiful choice for a sash because it's got that wiry stiffness in it that will hold the shape, but it is also soft. Similar to the Silk Organdy is something called Cotton Organza. And it is much stiffer. Um, my kids would have never worn a full garment out of cotton organdy. It would have been too scratchy. So be careful if you're choosing this 
Um, it makes great sashes and accents, but you probably don't want a lot of it up around a neckline as it can be quite scratchy. So moving away from the heirloom fabrics into the more, um, I wouldn't say everyday, but less high-end fabrics, probably all-time favorite for me is this 1 32nd inch check. It comes in a beautiful range of colors. You can get it in a Pima cotton, which does have a wrinkle factor to it, and it also comes in that Imperial blend, which is the 6535, and that's more budget-friendly and doesn't wrinkle as much. And this has the interest and the texture of a check, but it almost reads as a plane. I, I use this a lot. Next, most common one I would use in the check family, would, this one's called a 1 16th inch check. And it's, um, I use it less than the 1 32nd check, but it comes in such a beautiful array of colors that sometimes the, the color is the dominating factor in the choice that I make to use this. Um, be aware that the 1 32nd check also comes as a brushed or more like a winter weight um, brushed fabric. And this is lovely for winter garments. I'm a big fan of pique. I use it a lot. The one that would be most common for me to use would be called a fine line pique. And it comes in a good range of neutrals and then a rainbow of beautiful colors. 60 inches wide, all cotton, just really lovely fabric. You can do just about anything with pique. Pique comes in lots of different configurations and weights. The, the most common ones I would use are the fine line. Then there's something called bird's eye, which has these little circular eyes in it. And it's a, it's a much thicker fabric than the fine line pique. I wouldn't try and pleat something like this. It's too heavy. Also in the pique family is something called Dakota pique, which has this, it's almost like a little quilted embossed feel to it. This is a really nice choice for jackets or something you're going to embroider on because it's got a nice weight to it. And there's also something called waffle pique, which would be more in line weight wise with the fine line pique. You could probably pleat waffle pique, whereas you couldn't the heavier ones. I really like the Pima, Mike, or Pima tartans that come from Speckler Vogel. They come in a whole array of beautiful traditional tartans. They, some of them are 45 wide, some of them are 60 wide. Pima cotton, these are really great fabrics for kids' clothes. They just have such a classic look to them. All-time favorite fabric for me, without question, would be a piece of Liberty of London in one of their classic little floral prints. Um, pricey to be sure, but there's just nothing else that feels or has the design detail that a piece of Liberty does. But there are some domestic lawns, some sort of copycat lawns. This is an older piece, but there's lots of nice ones on the market right now um, that are about a third, a half to a third the price of the Liberty and are a pretty good substitute if you're not in the market to um, be at a Liberty price point. I also really like feather, featherweight corduroy. It's a 21 whale cord and um, it's it's softer and lighter weight than you expect a corduroy to be. It can be pleated. I don't generally love the look of pleated corduroy, but it's certainly fine enough that you can pleat it. And it comes in beautiful colors. Um, silk has limited use for me for children's garments because there's such a high care factor on it. But if I'm going to make a silk dress, I really prefer silk taffeta, which is this one, 
over silk dupioni, which is this one, because I, I think the camera will pick up. There are way less of these slub lines in the taffeta than there are going to be in the dupioni. You can really run into trouble with these slubs if you're trying to pleat something. So if you have a choice between the two, I would choose the silk taffeta. I use a lot of wools. Um, not everyone likes wool, but I live in a place climate that's very conducive to using wools. Um, Italian wool flannel is without question my wool of choice if I'm making a tailored coat. Um, this is an unwashed piece and if I was making a dress coat I would, I would use it off the bolt like this. I will occasionally take a piece of this Italian wool flannel and wash it in hot water in my washing machine and put it in a hot dryer and it felts it. I usually, I use, it depends on the color, but um, can lose up to four or five inches per yard in length and two, maybe three inches in width. Um, but it leaves you with a piece of wool that is washable. And so for children's garments, little jackets and things, I prefer to felt my wool before I use it. Um, just as an unusual choice, you sometimes need to think out of the box. And this is a piece of tropical weight men's wool suiting, which is not something you would ever expect to use on a child's smock dress. But this, this ended up being probably my all-time favorite dress I've ever made. And so sometimes think a little bit out of the box. The dress that's on the mannequin behind me is also, it's not this exact weight, but it is a very lightweight wool gabardine. And um, again, not an expected choice, but sometimes it's fun to think out of the box. So again, this is not in any way a comprehensive list, but it's a quick peek into a list of some of the fabrics I like to use in my heirloom sewing. So thanks for watching. Keep stitching.